In today's video, we're gonna talk about if you should track the protein from all your food sources. Welcome, this is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. I just had my coffee so I have a little bit of energy. Apologies, if you can't handle it, slow the video down and I'll be on normal speed. I'm gonna go quick here today, got a lot to talk about. Today's topic is going to be tracking protein from other sources such as non-protein sources like nuts and pasta and veggies, right? But before we get into that, I got a couple things I need to discuss. I am terrible at talking about things that I am doing, projects that I am working on. And so I want to share something today that I have going on this October, okay? It's the weekend of October 20th. It's Thursday to Sunday. It is a camp that I am holding. A camp here in Tampa that is going to be right near my house. We have booked out the gym, we've got the hotel, and it's Thursday night, starts with dinner. Friday we do lectures and training. Saturday. Uh, training and team building, Sunday training, and you get to spend time with some awesome people, okay? And I'm not including myself in that. I am just the coach. But I have brought in some of my favorite people to give some lectures and some training advice. And so the people are none other than Dr. Joe Klemzeski. Amazing. Dr. Bill Campbell. That's right. Lauren Conlon. Shocked, I know, you're shocked that Lauren's up. Katie Rutherford, how's about Katie Rutherford? KDN100 for anyone that's out there, anyone like jacked, strong chicks, right? Very well spoken, um, just an amazing person. She's undergone some amazing changes in the last couple of years and it's just been fun to be a part of that journey and she's gonna be here. Ryan Doris, how about that? Ryan Doris, that's right. So, if anyone's interested in attending this event, I'm charging $700, maybe that sounds a lot. I try to keep the price as low as possible. I'm flying Joe in, flying Ryan out, flying Katie in. So I'm taking the time to get people here. Mostly it's a team building event. So if you like the Pro Physique vibe, if you like the people that I work with, my clients, a lot of them are going to be there. Um, I have a very limited amount of spots left. Okay, I've sold most of them. So I have a few spots left. So if you're interested, email my administrator at training at prophysique.com. Her name is Karina. She will get back to you with a flyer, discussions, um, what's included, not the flights, not the hotel. There's a couple meals included. It's all on the flyer. But basically, you're just going to have a three-day experience hanging out with all of us, talking shop, talking science, talking business, talking coaching, training, bodybuilding, um, it's just going to be an immersement and you'll find that uh, after a few days you leave with a bunch of new friends and uh, it's an amazing thing. And then also November 11th, the OCB, Florida West Coast Classic. I'm freaking excited. I have more signups this year than I've ever had already. I'm so excited. The show is going to be so good this year. So if you're in the Tampa area, check it out. It's going to be at the University of South Florida. If you're interested in that, it's tampanatural.com. Do I sound like a commercial yet? I'm sorry, but these are the things I gotta get out. I promise after November 11th, I'll have nothing else to talk about, right? November 18th, I'm going out to Miami for NPC Nationals and I'm bringing squad, hashtag squad goals. We're gonna be down there kicking some boot E. All right guys, that's enough salesmanship. So today's video topic comes from a question that used to be pretty common. I think when I first got into coaching, I would get it more often and I get it less and less frequently. However, I think I'm getting like a new audience. I got a question on the YouTubes and I thought it's a good question to answer because this is a question I used to ask myself and there are varying opinions on it. But the question basically comes down to this. Do you track the protein in a food source that you don't typically use for protein intake? So we all know the protein sources are, you know, lean meats like chicken, steak, pork, right? And then you also got like egg whites, you can get whey protein, all fish, 
Some fish are super fantastic because they're so lean, easy to digest, right? There's just a lot of sources of protein that are considered protein. And when you eat that, you go, oh, I had 40 grams of protein. But would you eat a bowl of broccoli and go, oh, I had 20 grams of protein? Probably not, but you did. See, a lot of other food sources carry quite a bit of protein. So much so, in fact, when I first started tracking my macros, I was actually surprised how much protein I was getting because I didn't take into account some major sources of protein, such as pasta. Pastas are loaded with protein. And now, it seems like the food industry has caught up with this idea of protein being good for you because there's a lot of products now that are labeled high protein. I don't know the specifics of what the FDA requires for the food to be considered high protein. It's certainly not what we would consider as bodybuilders and physique athletes to be high protein. But there you have it. You go and you'll get a box of pasta and it'll say a good source of protein. You go get uh, a box of uh, you know, cereal bars and it'll say a good source of protein. And that's because there are quite a few benefits to protein. So when we're talking about tracking, should you track those sources of protein? Well. Not always. It depends on your goals. Likely, if you're track, if you're watching my channel, you already, you already track your protein from all your sources, because we as flexible dieters track macronutrients. They are our lifeblood. We need to know the protein, carbs, and fats for everything we eat, because we're trying to hit some targets by the end of the day, keep our ratios tight, and keep our bodies right. So what we want to do is, when we sit down for a meal, not look at I had a steak, I had some rice, I had some broccoli. So the steak was protein, the carbs from the rice, and you know carbs from the, the broccoli. So no, that's not what we wanna do. We wanna look at the macronutrient profile for each of those foods. Something funny happens when you do this. You start to eat foods that resemble the seven healthy foods or you know the magic foods you eat because those foods actually have really good macronutrient profiles. I myself, prefer when I'm dieting and getting really low on calories, I like to keep my macronutrient source from one food. Meaning, I don't like to eat something that, that blows out all the macros for all three groups. So like, if I'm going to eat a piece of meat, I want it to be lean. I don't want to get a bunch of fats from my meat usually because I would like to have another source of fat. This allows me to have a little bit of variety in my meal. So if I have a very fatty piece of meat, like some ground beef, then it doesn't leave me any room to have anything else like some peanut butter or some avocado or something that I would like to fill the diet with. So I'm all about like food volume and calorie density is something that's kind of anti-food volume. So if you're having some meat that's really high in fat like ground beef, well then you're gonna have less food volume. However, if you're talking about just general knowledge, just general public, should you track the macros from these sources that are not considered protein sources. Well, again, it depends on your goals. If your number one goal is just to lose some weight and you're trying to just pay attention to your calorie goals, then I wouldn't get too hung up on the macros for each food source. I would just pay attention to having some protein at each meal and hitting your protein goals for the day and then your total calorie goals for the day. Those are going to help you reach your goals with carbs and fats kind of being interchangeable. Again, it just comes down to your goals. It just comes down to what you want to do. Um, if it seems overwhelming to track protein, don't feel overwhelmed. Start slowly. Start just paying attention to what you're eating. Start the process. Don't think from day one you have to hit macronutrient goals on the head, okay? That can cause some, some anxiety and that can just throw us into effort mode and we don't want to try it anymore. The first time that I got a macro plan, I think I've talked about this before. It took me at least a week or 10 days before I even got close. My first macros, I think, were 250 protein, 330 carb, and 80 fat. And I think when I started tracking what I was actually hitting, I was like 280 protein, 120 fat, 400 carb. I was way off, right? So. I had to start whittling down and what I had to do was start plugging in the information into a website and going, oh, so ground beef has a lot of fat. So I'll get the lean ground beef, that'll bring my fat number down, right? So you start to just tinker with things. Oh, I can swap out some pork, pork is really lean. Oh, I can add in some fish, fish is even leaner. Now I've got all this fat over here that's coming off. 
my diet and it allows me more freedom to try different things out. So you start to realize what you enjoy, but do I feel that you should track the protein from all sources? Philosophically speaking, for me as a coach, yes you should. If you are hiring me, if you're hiring one of my friends, we are going to request that you track your macronutrients, right? Now, does that mean that that's the only way to be successful? No, that's just the way I do coaching, okay? My athletes are physique athletes and I'm paying attention to ratios. I work with general popular, I actually have some obese population people, but I still feel that high protein is very valuable, even in those situations, okay? So I want there to be accountability when it comes to macronutrients. So when you're eating pasta, when you're eating nuts, when you're eating broccoli, we're tracking the full macronutrient profiles from those foods, okay? Just to make sure we're staying in range of our goals. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. It's Thursday, I'm freaking excited. You should see my competitors, oh my gosh. In the next couple weeks, mind blown, people, mind blown. I got my girl Rachel competing this weekend up in Seattle, and I can't wait to see uh, how that comes out on stage, but she's gonna be at nationals. And then next weekend, I'm going to Boston for the Gaspari Cape Cod show. Um, I have five athletes at that show, and um, two pro bodybuilders, so they're gonna blow your mind holes when you see that. I'm bringing Chad Nutter with me to Cape Cod so we can document that stuff. And then um, it, it's just a lot of good stuff going on, guys. Like, uh, been doing this for years now, and I feel like a kid in a candy store because of the people I get to work with. I have the best, the best uh, athletes, and I get to be a part of their journeys, and so it's just been really fun. All right, guys, have an awesome Thursday. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm not so